This is the beginning of the first book of Adam and Eve. These writings have been lost to history. These writings have been lost to men who have hidden them for themselves and have not even gained wisdom or knowledge from these writings. They have just buried these writings. But this is the generation into which our God, our Jesus Christ the Nazareth, our Holy Spirit, our Comforter, has endowed us with spiritual wisdom and spiritual countenance here on this earth as it is in heaven. Again, these writings are considered apocrypha. They cannot be found in the Holy Bible. They were disclaimed, they were considered hearsay. This is the beginning of the first book of Adam and Eve, also called the conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan, chapter one, on the third day, God planted the garden in the east of the earth, on the border of the world eastward, beyond which, towards the sun rising, one finds nothing but water that encompasses the whole world and reaches unto the borders of heaven. And to the north of the gate, there is a sea of water clear and pure to the taste, like unto nothing else, so that through the clearness thereof, one may look into the depths of the earth. And when a man washes himself in it, becomes clean of the cleanness thereof, and white of his whiteness, even if he were dark. And God created that sea of his own good pleasure, for he knew what would come of the man he should make so that after he had left the garden on account of his transgression men should be born in the earth from among whom righteous ones should die whose souls god would raise at the last day when they should return to their flesh should bathe in the water of that sea and all of them repent of their sins but when God made Adam go out of the garden, he did not place him on the border of it northward, lest he should draw near to the sea of water. And he and Eve washed themselves in it, be cleansed from their sins, forget the transgression they had committed. And he no longer reminded of it in thought of their punishment. Then again, as to the southern side of the garden, God was not pleased to let Adam dwell there because when the wind blew from the north, it would bring him on that southern side. The delicious smell of the trees of the garden, wherefore God did not put Adam there, lest he should not smell the sweet smell of those trees, forget his transgression and find consolation for what he had done take delight in the smell of the trees and not be cleansed from his transgression. Again, also, because God is merciful and of great pity and governs all things in a way he alone knows, he made our father Adam dwell in the western border of the garden because on that side, the earth is very broad. And God commanded him to dwell there in a cave, in a rock cave, the cave of treasures below the garden. Chapter two. But when our father Adam and Eve went out of the garden, they trod the ground on their feet, not knowing they were treading. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden, and saw the broad spread before them, covered with stones large and small, and with sand. They feared and trembled, and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them, and they were as dead. Because whereas they had hitherto been in the garden land, 
beautifully planted with all manner of trees. They now saw themselves in a strange land which they knew not and had never seen. And because at the time they were filled with the grace of bright nature and they had not hearts turned towards earthly things. Therefore God had pity on them and when he saw them fallen before the gate of the garden, he sent his word unto Father Adam and Eve and raised them from their fallen state. Chapter 3 God said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years, and thou and thy seed shall dwell and walk in it until the days and years are fulfilled, when I shall send thee word that created thee, and against which thou hast transgressed, the word that made thee come out of the garden, and that raised thee when thou hast fallen. Yea, the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from God, and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be but five days and a half for him to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed God to explain to him. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and similitude, explained to him that these were 5,500 years and how one would then come and save him and his seed. But God had before that made this covenant with our father, Adam, in the same terms. Ere he came out of the garden, when he was by the tree whereof Eve took the fruit and gave it him to eat. Inasmuch as when our father Adam came out of the garden, he passed by that tree and saw how God had then changed the appearance of it into another form and how it withered. And as Adam went to it, he feared, trembled, and fell down. But God, in his mercy, lifted him up and then made this covenant with him. And again, when Adam was by the gate of the garden and the cherub with a sword of flashing fire in his hand, and the cherub grew angry and frowned at him. Both Adam and Eve became afraid of him and thought he meant to put them to death. So they fell on their faces and trembled with fear. But he had pity on them and showed them mercy and turning from them went up to heaven and prayed unto the Lord and said, Lord, Thou didst send me to watch at the gate of the garden with a sword of fire. But when thy servants, Adam and Eve, saw me, they fell on their faces and were as dead. O oh my Lord, what shall we do to thy servants? Then God had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the garden. And the word of the Lord came unto Adam and Eve and raised them up. And the Lord said unto Adam, I told thee that at the end of five days and a half, I will send my word and save thee. And when Adam heard this word from God, he was comforted with that which God had told him. For he had told him how he would save him. Chapter 4 But Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first abode. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, 
over what they had done. And they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. And as they came to it, Adam wept over himself and said to Eve, look at this cave that is to be our prison in this world and a place of punishment. What is it compared with the garden? What is its narrowness compared with the space of the other? What is this rock by the side of those groves? What is the gloom of this cavern compared with the light of the garden? What is this overhanging ledge of rock to shelter us compared with the mercy of the Lord that overshadowed us? What is this soil of this cave compared to the garden land? This earth strewed with stones and that planted with delicious fruit trees. And Adam said to Eve, Look at thine eyes and at mine, which afore beheld angels in heaven, praising and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become a flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwelt in the garden? After this, Adam did not like to enter the cave under the overhanging rock, nor would he ever have entered it. But he bowed to God's orders and said to himself, unless I enter the cave, I shall again be a transgressor. Chapter five. Then Adam and Eve entered the cave and stood praying in their own tongue, unknown to us, but which they knew well. And as they prayed, Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock of the roof of the cave that covered him overhead, so that he could see neither heaven nor God's creatures. So he wept and smote heavily upon his breast until he dropped and was as dead. And Eve sat weeping, for she believed he was dead. Then she arose, spread her hands towards God, suing him for mercy and pity and said, Oh God, forgive me my sin, the sin which I committed and remember it not against me. For I alone caused thy servant to fall from the garden into this lost estate, from light into this darkness and from the abode of joy into this prison. Oh God, Look upon this thy servant thus fallen and raise him from his death that he may weep and repent of his transgression that he committed through me. Take not away his soul this once, but let him live that he may stand after the measure of his repentance and do thy will as before his death. But if thou do not raise him up, then O oh God, take away my own soul, that I be like him, and leave me not in this dungeon, one and alone, for I could not stand alone in this world, but with him only. For thou, O oh God, didst cause a slumber to come upon him, and didst take a bone from his side, and didst restore the flesh in the place of it, by thy divine power and thou didst take me the bone and make me a woman bright like him with heart reason and speech and in flesh like unto his own and thou didst make me after the likeness of his countenance by thy mercy and power O Lord I and he are one, and thou 
O oh God, art our creator. Thou art he who made us both in one day. Therefore, O oh God, give him life that he may be with me in this strange land while we dwell in it on account of our transgression. But if thou wilt not give him life, then take me, even me, like him, that we both may die the same. And Eve wept bitterly and fell upon our father Adam from her great sorrow. Chapter 6 But God looked upon them, for they had killed themselves through great grief. But he would raise them and comfort them. He, therefore, sent his word unto them that they should stand and be raised forthwith. And the Lord said unto Adam and Eve, You transgressed of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. Of your own free will, you have transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalted state such as I have, so that I deprive you of the bright nature in which you then were. And I made you come out of the garden to this land, rough, and full of trouble. If you only had not transgressed my commandment and kept my law and had not eaten of the fruit of the tree near which I told you not to come. And there were fruit trees in the garden better than that one. But the wicked Satan who continued not in his first estate nor kept his faith in whom was no good intent towards me, and who, though I had created him, yet set me at naught, and sought the Godhead, so that I hurled him down from heaven. He it is who made the tree appear pleasant in your eyes, until you ate of it, by hearkening to him. Thus you have transgressed my commandment, and therefore I have brought upon you all these sorrows. For I am God the Creator, who, when I created my creatures, did not intend to destroy them, but after they had sorely roused my anger, I punished them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary, they still continue to harden in their transgression, they shall be under a curse forever. Chapter 7 When Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they wept and sobbed yet more. But they strengthened their hearts in God because they now felt that the Lord was to them like a father and mother. And for this reason, they wept before him and sought mercy from him. Then God had pity on them and said, O oh Adam, I have made my covenant with thee and I will not turn from it. Neither will I let thee return to the garden until my covenant of the great five days and a half is fulfilled. Then Adam said unto God, O Lord, thou didst create us and make us fit to be in the garden. And before I transgress, thou madest all beasts come to me that I should name them. Thy grace was then on me and I named everyone according to thy mind and thou madest them all subject unto me but now O Lord God that I have transgressed thy commandment 
All beasts will rise up against me and will devour me and Eve, thy handmaid, and will cut off our life from the face of the earth. I therefore beseech thee, O God, that since thou hast made us come out of the garden and has made us be in a strange land, thou wilt not let the beast hurt us. When the Lord heard these words from Adam, he had pity on him and felt that he had truly said that the beast of the field would rise and devour him and Eve because he, the Lord, was angry with them too on account of their transgression. Then God commanded the beast and the birds and all that move upon the earth to come to Adam and to be familiar with him and not to trouble him and Eve, nor yet any of the good and righteous among their posterity. Then the beasts were obedient to Adam according to the commandment of God, except the serpent against which God was made wroth. It did not come to Adam with the beast. Chapter 8 then Adam wept and said, O oh God, when we dwelt in the garden and our hearts were lifted up, we saw the angels that sang praises in heaven. But now we do not see as we were used to do. Nay, when we entered the cave, all creation became hidden from us. Then God the Lord said unto Adam, when thou wast under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee. And for that reason couldst thou see things afar. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee. And it was not left to thee to see things afar off, but only near at hand after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. When Adam and Eve had heard these words from God, they went their way, praising and worshiping him with a sorrowful heart. And God ceased to commune with them. Chapter nine. Then Adam and Eve came out of the cave of treasures and drew near to the garden gate. And there they stood to look at it and wept for having come away from it. And Adam and Eve went from before the gate of the garden to the southern side of it and found there the water that watered the garden from the root of the tree of life. And that parted itself from thence into four rivers of the earth. Then they came and drew near to the water and looked at it and saw that it was the water that came forth from under the root of the tree of life in the garden. And Adam wept and wailed and smote it upon his breast for being severed from the garden and said to Eve, why hast thou brought upon me, upon thyself, and upon our seed, so that many of these plagues and punishment? And Eve said unto him, What is it thou hast seen? To weep and to speak to me in this wise. And he said to Eve, Seest thou not this water that was with us in the garden, that watered the trees of the garden and flowed out thence? And we, when we were in the garden, did not care about it. But since we came to this strange land, we love it and turn it to use for our body. But when Eve heard these words from him, she wept. And from the soreness of their weeping, they fell into the water and would have put an end to themselves in it. So as never again to return and behold the creation 
For when they looked upon the work of the creation, they felt they must put an end to themselves. Chapter 10. Then God, merciful and gracious, looked upon them thus lying in the water and nigh unto death, and sent an angel who brought them out of the water and laid them on the seashore as dead. Then the angel went up to God, was welcome, and said, O oh God, thy creatures have breathed their last. Then God sent his word unto Adam and Eve, who raised them from their death. And Adam said, after he was raised, O oh God, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water. But since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. Then God said to Adam, While thou wast under my command, and wast a bright angel, thou knewest not this water. But after thou hadst transgressed my commandment, Thou canst not do without water wherein to wash thy body and make it grow. For it is now like that of a beast and is in want of water. When Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they wept a bitter cry. And Adam entreated God to let him return into the garden and look at it a second time. But God said unto Adam, I have made thee a promise. When that promise is fulfilled, I will bring thee back into the garden, thee and thy righteous seed. And God ceased to commune with Adam. Chapter 11. Then Adam and Eve felt themselves burning with thirst and heat and sorrow. And Adam said to Eve, We shall not drink of this water, even if we were to die. O oh Eve, when this water comes into our inner parts, it will increase our punishments and that of our children that shall come after us. Both Adam and Eve then withdrew from the water and drank none of it at all, but came and entered the cave of treasures. But when in it, Adam could not see Eve. He only heard the noise she made. Neither could she see Adam, but heard the noise he made. And then Adam wept in deep affliction and smote upon his breast. And he rose and said to Eve, where art thou? And she said unto him, Lo, I am standing in this darkness. He then said to her, Remember the bright nature in which we lived while we abode in the garden? O Eve, remember the glory that rested on us in the garden. O Eve, remember the trees that overshadowed us in the garden while we moved among them. O Eve, Remember that while we were in the garden, we knew neither night nor day. Think of the tree of life from below which flowed the water and that shed luster over us. Remember, O oh Eve, the garden land and the brightness thereof. Think, O oh, think of the garden in which was no darkness while we dwelt therein. Whereas no sooner did we come into this cave of treasures than darkness compassed us round about until we can no longer see each other and all the pleasures of this life have come to an end. Chapter 12 Then Adam smote upon his breast, he and Eve, and they mourned the whole night until the dawn drew near. And they sighed over the length of the night in Miazia. And Adam beat himself and threw himself on the ground in the cave.
from bitter grief and because of the darkness and lay there as dead. But Eve heard the noise he made falling upon the earth and she felt about for him with her hands and found him like a corpse. Then she was afraid, speechless, and remained by him. But the merciful Lord looked on the death of Adam and on Eve's silence from fear of the darkness. And the word of God came unto Adam and raised him from his death and opened Eve's mouth that she might speak. Then Adam arose in the cave and said, O oh God, wherefore has light departed from us and darkness come over us? Wherefore dost thou leave us in this long darkness? Why wilt thou plague us thus and this darkness? O oh Lord, where was it ere it came upon us? It is such that we cannot see each other. For so long as we were in the garden, we neither saw nor even knew what darkness is. I was not hidden from Eve, neither was she hidden from me, until now that she cannot see me. And no darkness came upon us to separate us from each other. But she and I were both in one bright light. I saw her and she saw me. Yet now, since we came into this cave, darkness has come upon us and parted us asunder so that I do not see her and she does not see me. O oh Lord, wilt thou then plague us with this darkness? Chapter 13. Then when God, who is merciful and full of pity, heard Adam's voice. He said unto him, O oh Adam, so long as the good angel was obedient to me, a bright light rested on him and his hosts. But when he transgressed my commandment, I deprived him of that bright nature, and he became dark. And when he was in the heavens, in the realms of light, he knew not of darkness. But he transgressed, and I made him fall from heaven upon the earth. And it was this darkness that came upon him. And on thee, O Adam, while in my garden and obedient to me, did that bright light rest also. But when I heard of thy transgression, I deprived thee of that bright light. Yet of my mercy, I did not turn thee into darkness, but I made thee thy body of flesh, over which I spread this skin in order that it may bear cold and heat. If I had let my wrath fall heavenly upon thee, I should have destroyed thee. And had I turned thee into darkness, it would have been as if I killed thee. But in my mercy, I have made thee as thou art. When thou didst transgress my commandment, O Adam, I drove thee from the garden and made thee come forth into this land and commanded thee to dwell in this cave. And darkness came upon thee as it did upon him who transgressed my commandment. Thus, O Adam, has this night deceived thee. It is not to last forever, but is only of 12 hours. When it is over, daylight will return. Sigh not. Therefore, neither be moved and say not in thy heart that this darkness is long and drags on wearily. And say not in thy heart that I plague thee with it. 
Strengthen thy heart and be not afraid. This darkness is not a punishment, but, O oh Adam, I have made the day and have placed the sun in it to give light in order that thou, thy children, should do your work. For I knew thou shouldest sin and transgress and come out into this land. Yet would I not force thee, nor be heard upon thee, nor shut up, nor doom thee through thy fall, nor through thy coming out from light into darkness, nor yet thy coming from the garden into this land. For I made thee of the light, and I will to bring out children of light from thee and like unto thee. But thou didst not keep one day my commandment, until I had finished the creation and blessed everything in it. Then I commanded thee concerning the tree, that thou eat not thereof. Yet I knew that Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive thee. So I made known to thee by means of the tree, not to come near him. And I told thee not to eat of the fruit thereof nor taste of it, nor yet to sit under it, nor to yield to it, had I not been spoken and spoken to thee, O Adam, concerning the tree, and had I left thee without a commandment, and thou hadst sinned, it would have been an offense on my part, for not having given thee any order, Thou wouldst turn around and blamed me for it. But I commanded thee, and I warned thee, and thou didst fall, so that my creatures cannot blame me. But the blame rests on them alone. And, O oh Adam, I have made the day for thee and for thy children after thee, for them to work and toil therein. I have made the night for them to rest in it from their work. And for the beast of the field to go forth by night and seek their food. But little of darkness now remains, O oh Adam, and daylight will soon appear. Chapter 14. Then Adam said unto God, O Lord, take thou my soul and let me not see this gloom any more, or remove me to some place where there is no darkness. But God, the Lord, said to Adam, Verily, I say unto thee, this darkness will pass from thee. Every day I have determined for thee until the fulfillment of my covenant when I will save thee and bring thee back again into the garden, into the abode of the light thou longest for, wherein is no darkness, I will bring thee to it in the kingdom of heaven. Again said God unto Adam, all this misery that thou hast been made to take upon thee because of thy transgression, will not free thee from the hand of Satan and will not save thee, but I will. When I shall come down from heaven and shall become flesh of thy seed and take upon me the infirmity from which thou sufferest, then the darkness that came upon thee in this cave shall come upon me in the grave when I am in the flesh of thy seed. And I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days. And I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men in order to save thee. And God ceased to commune with Adam. Chapter 15. Then Adam and Eve 
wept and sorrowed by reason of God's word to them that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the days decreed upon them, but mostly because God had told them that he should suffer for their salvation. End of chapter 15. Thank you for listening. Thank you for believing in God. Thank you for believing in Jesus. Thank you for believing in the Holy Spirit. Yet, God wants you to know him. Jesus wants you to know him. The Holy Spirit wants you to know who the Holy Spirit is, which is the Spirit of God that dwells within all of us. The writings of God cannot be contained in 66 books within the Holy Bible. The members that put the Bible together did so with good faith, mostly. Yet, there are hidden mysteries that are in dark, deep places that God is revealing. These writings have been around for thousands of years. The book of Adam and Eve was recorded by ancient Egyptians and no one knows which Egyptian recorded it. These writings again are considered apocrypha and these writings cannot be found in the Bible and they have been disclaimed and considered hearsay. Finding God for yourself is the most important thing because at the end of it all, at the end of it all, it'll only be you and God and God and I. God is a spirit. God is not religion and religion does not go to heaven. Only you do, which is the living word of God that dwells within you. Be blessed and stay phenomenal and continue to find God for yourself so that you may plan strategically for your life or life will strategically plan for you. This book contains the first speaking of the prophecy of Jesus Christ to come to earth. Chapter 15, that sole verse mentions it. Chapter 14, the entire chapter mentions the coming of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene as to why Jesus had to come, why God had to come in the flesh as the son of man. God spoke to Adam and Eve first about the coming of Christ. We must understand there are many writings. Again, the ocean nor the earth can contain all the writings of God. God is seeking you. The very first question in Genesis was, where art thou? I will be coming forth with more Apocrypha soon. Chapter 16 through 30 in the book of Adam and Eve. Amen. God bless you.